This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. I'm here with my boy, Nick Wright, and we're gonna do some squats today. Oh yes. What are you gonna do squat-wise? Well, we're gonna see uh, how the big old diaper feels once we throw it on, those sexy new briefs. We're gonna and throw then on some slingshot briefs. We're just gonna see how weight feels and take it from there one step at a time. So what we're gonna show you today in this video is we're gonna show you guys some low bar squatting. Now for me, personally, I can't really even get the bar low. Uh, but when I have worked on it, especially, I, I guess I just didn't need to when I was lifting in powerlifting gear, the bar could stay higher. Mm -hmm. Cause I actually needed the bar, I needed the center of gravity to try to like push me straight down. Right, right. And so this like kind of forward lean it thing. like collapse you. Yeah, just it wouldn't work very well and the suit wouldn't work very well. So I had the bar a little higher and the weight would kind of push me down a little bit more like that. But Nick's gonna be demonstrating, mm -hmm. trying to get that bar lower. And I know for myself personally that I've had increases in my squat by about 50 pounds just by taking the bar a little lower. The problem with me has been shoulder mobility, flexibility uh, through the chest and things like that has kind of limited me to be able to get the bar uh, as low as I need. But it made such a huge difference when I was lifting raw that I went from squatting like around 600 pounds to being able to squat closer to 700 pounds, like 677 or 683 yeah. or something like that. So it made that big of, I mean, that's that's a really, really big difference. So. You, you need to find what's comfortable to you. So what I'd like you to take, take from this video today is to just understand that low might be relative, like low for him versus low for a female lifter, low for somebody else might look a little different because you probably just need to get the bar slightly lower <laughs> And wherever you currently have it, kind of like with close grip bench. Yeah, it's different for everybody. Sometimes for people sure. are like, that's not a close grip bench. I'm like, but it's a lot closer than what right. I normally train with. So for me, it's a close grip exactly. bench. Exactly. Yeah. And with your build, like you may just be better suited for like a mid bar, like yep. not quite super low, but not a high bar either. So you just got to find out what works best for you and what feels best. High bar squat, when the bar is really high up on your neck, you're gonna have a tendency to be launched forward or to move fo in a forward fashion and kind of have the, the lift be like a two-part lift. If the bar is too low, oddly enough, the same exact thing happens <laughs> because you're trying to keep your center of gravity and you can't really find it. But Nick's gonna demonstrate yeah. how he sets up on the bar. With a low bar, one of the most important things is starting with your grip first. Okay, I'm gonna get in to show you how to get the position on your back and how to get your back tight. But one of the first things I wanna knock out is just uh, watch the difference here with my grip. Cause you want your grip to be as close to your shoulders as possible. And that could mean whatever it means for you. So, you know, Mark may not be able to get his grip in super wide, uh, close. So he'll keep his grip out here. But that's, that's as tight as he can get it, that's fine. You may be able to get your grip here. Some people can get their hands right by their shoulders if they're super flexible. I wanna what point out real quick that you know, people ask all the time why I do that. I do that because that's my only option. So, you know, learn, learn from us older guys, take care of your body, try to keep your shoulders opened up and don't end up having to squat way out here because I'm at a huge disadvantage. I'd be able to lift more weight if I could simply get my hands in a little closer and keep my back a little tighter. Yeah, the tighter you can keep your back, the more upright you can keep your torso and the more you can drive into that weight. The looser you keep your back, the more out you keep your hands, the easier it's gonna be for you to fold over. And of course, the bigger you are, uh, you have more meat and muscle going on and just more body mass. So really, really big guys, if they're here and they just bring their hands in here, that might be tight for them because they're so big. So whatever works for you, but watch this difference. So if I try to just get my back, right? If I keep my hands nice and loose, not really planted, not committed anywhere, and I just try to get my back really tight first, right? And then get my grip in there. Note how far out my hands are. Note how far, so my hands, uh, ring fingers basically on the rings right here, right? And that's about as tight as I can get them. I can't get my hands any closer into my shoulders right now. So watch this. If I instead get my grip first, I lock my grip in, I cement my hands. See how much closer it is? You got a few fingers between the rings there, much closer. It was previously just here, now we're here, much closer. And now if it's I, gonna be locked if in. If I cement my hands in, now I can force myself under the bar, keeping my hands where they are, and now I have super, super tight shoulders and upper back. So this is way tighter, and if you watch, the second I let go of that grip, they wanna go outward. So that's so important to lock your hands into the positioning of the bar first then get your back do, in. Do it again. Um, notice that he's not allowing the bar to hit his neck until he's ready to have the bar, you know, kind of low on his back. I see a lot of guys, they'll, when they go to get underneath the bar, they start, can you do, come back over for a second? And uh, they will 
scrape kind of up here and then they can't ever get it like locked in because they just kind of keep pushing their shirt around. So I would say make sure you go under enough so you can really get it right where you want it. And you see where he has it. I mean, he has it. The weight is resting on the rear delts. Yes. And the weight is, if you can turn around for a second, the weight is, it's a lot, it's a little lower than you might think it would be. Because here's like his mid back is through here. Traps are right here. His, sh his shoulders, his collarbones are right here. And the bar is right on the rear delts. And this, this is why we shot an entire video talking about the importance of back training. If you don't have this, the bar is just gonna slide right down your back. You need to have some beef back there. You need to have some muscle mass back there. In a good way, I like to teach people, because it can be really tricky trying to figure out how to get the bar low down and make it feel good. One of the hardest parts for switching to low bar is that. It just feels like it's awkward, it's low. So what I tell people is imagine you're doing a lat pull down behind the neck, right? And you're going really light so you can break the rules. Instead of stopping here, you, you do a lat pull down as low as you can possibly go, right? You're trying to touch the back of your shoulders with the bar in a behind the neck lat pull down. And as you're doing this, you're squeezing those lats, you're squeezing those traps, you're, you're contracting your back. And right when that bar hits your rear delts, that's how you wanna be under a low bar squat. So this is the same thing, except now the bar's not coming to you, you're instead going to the bar. But if you watch my form here, it looks literally like I'm doing a deep behind the neck pull down. So I'm here. And look, contracting the lats. I'm driving the elbows down by flexing the lats. I'm flexing the lats, flexing the lats, pulling it in, 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 right here. If you just picture the cable on this bar, it looks like the bottom of a very, very deep behind the neck pull down. And that's about where you wanna be. And you wanna keep your back nice and tight because uh, it keeps those rear delts poking out and you allows the bar to sit on it. If you watch when I let go, if I let this back go loose, it rolls right off. So you need to have the delts back behind you and squeeze tightly to create that shelf for the bar to sit on. But something really important to understand, and you guys, you know, you've probably been watching a lot of these videos for a long time, so hopefully you already understand this. But for those of you that may, may have not heard this before, you want to practice this every single time that you squat. Same thing with your bench press setup, same thing with your deadlift setup. You want to try to practice it the same way. So Things might look a little different sometimes when you're warming up, you might be achy, you might be tired and so on, but we're trying our best to lock everything in the same way. Doesn't matter if there's six plates on the bar or if there's zero plates on the bar, this is where we get our practice. And you don't hear people talking enough about practicing lifting, mm -hmm. but the practicing of the lift is gonna be something that can help you get a lot stronger, a lot faster and a lot safer. So really take that to heart and become a student of the game and take your time with this stuff. It's really easy to get caught up in yeah. saying, oh, I wanna do three plates for today. Powerlifting is a very technical sport. You don't think of it. You hear, you hear technical sports, you think of boxing, fighting, stuff like that. Powerlifting is also a very technical sport because it's all based on physics. You have to mas like maximize, optimize the physics of your body to make the lift move the best it can. So yeah, take your time to learn the technicals. I mean, you said the key word there, you need optimal weight. You know, it's not maximal weight. It's not necessarily sub-maximal weight. It's, it's the optimal weight for you to make progress. And that's what it gets to be so hard. It gets to be hard to figure out. We're gonna slap some weight on here because we can't really learn much of anything. Without true, weight true. When a big, 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 big thing that people miss, miss on when it comes to squatting is the unracking. And um, it's something so small and minute, but it gets so overlooked. So a lot of times the mistake people make when they go to unrack, right, is they stay loose and limp. If you look at my body when I'm under here, like I'm, I can salsa dance, look at the bar, it's resting heavily on the pegs, I'm all good, right, nothing. And then they go like this, they get all fired up, they're still loose under the bar, that bar is heavy on those pegs right now, and then they go zero to 60 and they go, ooh, jam it up like that. <laughs> so that's the first thing that's wrong. When you, when you get under this bar, you wanna start loading from the ground up like you're doing a squat already from the second you get underneath this bar. So if you watch when I set up, I'm digging that bar deep into my back. I'm trying to bend the bar down around my body. And look at the bar, it doesn't wanna stay still. I'm already jamming it against those pegs, it's hovering off the pegs. And I'm not doing anything dramatic, I'm not sitting here trying to lift it up. I'm just, my glutes, my lower body is already so engaged and ready to squat, it's already applying pressure from the floor. So as I'm getting under this bar, it's hard to keep the bar even down on the pegs because I already have so much pressure. And that makes it, you're loaded, you're tight now. You have, it's like a, a spring being coiled, you're ready to go. So from here, all I do is I take a big breath of air and just force my hips in, boom, and it stands me straight up. 
And that's the biggest thing with the unrack too. The last little bit I want to say on this is uh, another big mistake on top of not loading the bar and staying tight from the very start is people will either start with one foot on the ground and stand up like this, or the biggest one is they stand behind the bar and they kind of good morning it up like this. You want to treat your, your unrack like it is the first rep of your set. The unrack is your first rep. So you want to get your feet under you, under the bar. Feet are under the bar, that pressure's still going into the bar. And then from here, all we're doing is we're just pushing the hips forward and they are what are standing my body up. And look, it's, it's literally the lockout of a rep right there. If you have somebody that you're training with, uh, you could easily help each other out a ton by making sure that the other guy is centered. Like if you're newer to lifting, trying to get centered is a difficult thing. Trying to get your back tight is a difficult thing. So if you can line up on the bar again, all I'm gonna do is kind of cue him to, to tighten up the upper back. Just this little tapping, little hitting, and, and making sure, yep, he's, he's lined up good. I can kind of hit him and he can make sure that he's uh, squeezing those muscles and, and flexing hard. It's, it's amazing what that'll do for you. Anybody that's watching that has done any bodybuilding, as soon as your training partner taps your biceps when you're doing curls, it immediately makes you tighten up a little bit. And for this, this is huge. But imagine if you had that coaching or had that assistance every single time. And I highly recommend that you guys try to get somebody uh, that you don't have to get somebody necessarily that's stronger than you. You don't necessarily have to have somebody that you can kick their ass all the time either. You just need to have somebody that's really willing to train with you. And that, you know, that person could be just a savage because they could just want to do it so badly. That's what you need. And you're going to get a lot more out of your training that way. Right. All right, let's uh, get to some squatting. Let's do a squat. Show us a little bit with your walkout too. Yep, yep, so. Walk it out. Just to recap, hands are planted already. I'm getting my back nice and tight like a, a behind the neck pull down. Oh, quick, quick note here is that sometimes some people like to, you know, go thumbless and stuff. What are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, so it's, it's personal preference. There's a <laughs> bunch of ways to grip it. If you can do thumbless and you don't have problems with your grip slipping off the bar, that's okay then. I personally like having my thumb around it just so I can really squeeze that bar and keep it locked in tight against my body. Um, some people will even do little tricks where they, they only keep a couple of fingers hooked like this. So this is a way, because when you're under the bar, you want to get your elbows cocked forward as much as possible. They don't have to be uh, 90 degrees, but you just want them in tight as much as you can. So if you look, if I'm here, I cock my elbows in tight, they go here. If I release my pinky finger and just hook it with my fingers, now I can t cock my elbows in even more forward. But it's personal preference because for me personally, I've never been able to make the few finger thing uh, work. It just doesn't feel good for me. So I like uh, just hands, hands on the bar, thumbs around the bar. Simple as that. Okay, so tight back. Ready, see, bars, bars loaded. Feet are under me, not behind me. I'm taking in big air and I'm treating this, this is rep one. One thing to keep in mind here is we don't need to walk very far away from the rack. Two to three steps, baby steps. Plant them with purpose. Right there, two steps. If you need to take a third to adjust, that's fine, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a big mile walkout. You shouldn't be dancing and shimmying. And then you'll notice I have to tilt forward a little bit because it's low bar. So if I have a high bar like this, the center of your gravity is about the center of your foot. If you cut a line, cut my foot in half right at the arch, it's about the center of your gravity. You want the bar to stay over that center of gravity the entire rep, right? So if I have a high bar, I can keep my hips underneath me and stand basically straight up. And then I'll need to push the knees forward as I sit the hips back, but knees really come forward, hips stay more underneath you, and this bar stays over my center of gravity and I stay more upright. If I have a low bar position, and then I try to stand up right, the bar's already behind me, like I'm ready to fall backwards and drop it behind me. And then if I try to squat with just my knees going forward and hips underneath me, I can feel the bar's like wanting to fall back right now. So to compensate, you hinge at the hips. You just push the hips back just a little bit. And see what it did there? The barbell's behind my center of gravity now. Boom, now it's over my center of gravity. So as the hips go back, your torso comes forward and you are lined up, big air. You guys notice how the knees are locked. I see a lot of people with really soft knees. Knees are bent a little too much at the start of the squat and that's not a starting position for a squat. Your legs don't necessarily need to be like hyper extended or anything, but you wanna make sure they're locked out. I go to competitions a lot and I see people getting the squat command and their knees are bent like this much. Make sure that you're, you're really locking it out. It'll actually help a lot with your stability. It makes it harder to stand there with your knees bent actually. So again, my hands have to be out here just because it's uh, super difficult for me to keep them in here. Just lack of mobility, uh, tons of years of, of training. And uh, 
I just, I, I lost that ability. So I, I, I strongly urge that you guys don't lose that ability. Um, when it comes to strength training, there's really not, there's, there's hardly anything that I can't do anymore because I, I have kept most things intact, but this is like the one thing uh, that has been difficult for me. And you can see the amount of tightness we get going here, but I still have all the same rules to follow. I still have to figure out a way to get my back tight. So it poses some extra issues. So I'll get my back tight, just as Nick was talking about, I'm trying to pull those elbows kind of down and in a bit. And we're just gonna unwrap from there. And that's something to take into- Step her uh, back. Something to take into account too with big guys like this. If you are just genetically big and you don't have a lot of mobility naturally, then pulling your elbows in this much might get your back nice and tight. You know, me, I'm a smaller built guy and I have a lot of good flexibility and mobility. So if I kept them like that, I have so much more tightness to go and I'd be really loose because of it. So there's not necessarily a right or wrong, but like Mark said, you wanna to strive to keep the shoulders as mobile as possible and get that grip in as close as possible. The closer you can get the grip, the better. And Mark uses a nice wide stance that's also subjective. Typically, the wider your stance, the flatter the shoe you can wear. The closer your stance, the more of a heel you might benefit from. I kind of have like a medium stance where I'm not like Olympic lifter close, um, but I'm, not, I'm definitely not wide either. So I have like a half inch heel. So right in the middle, I don't have the full three quarters, one inch heel that you would have like with an ollie lifter. Right. I can't quite do flats either. I need a, just a little bit of assistance with that dorsiflexion and that's a sweet spot for me, so. Yeah, for me with raw lifting, I did a little bit better when I had a heel. Right. Uh, the mobility, or not the mobility, but the trying to stabilize it was always a little weird because yeah. I wasn't used to that. because I was used to wearing some uh, flatter shoes. <laughs> you want to get another plate on here? Yeah, would you, uh, you would squat wider in a suit? I would squat pretty wide, yeah. Would you squat wider in a suit than you would raw, or would you kind of keep it the same? Most of my training was really wide, where my stance would be kind of about here, and sometimes even wider, and my feet would be pointed straight ahead. Okay. Like wow. 100%. Wow, okay. And what I learned from that is that helped strengthen my hips a ton. When I went to competition, or as the competition got a little closer, I'd bring the stance in a little bit, and I would just go heels out, just to, or heels in rather, and, right. and toes out, right. and I would I would squat in there, and that felt amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, uh, you know, when you when you train, you're trying to cause an adaptation, and so you're trying to get yourself stronger. And I always found that getting myself strong from weak positions made me really strong. So we would do all kinds of different things to ensure that that happened. But one simple thing was just to squat wider. I think even uh, people that are trying to bring up their deadlift, I think squatting wide can, can really help a ton, and not just conventional, but I think with, uh, sumo, or with uh, sumo and conventional, I think it can help a ton because I see a lot of people are kind of, you have great mobility, you, you, it looks like your body moves really well, but I see a lot of people are kind of, they don't have like full access to what their hips are supposed right. to be able to do. Right. And so a lot of times when I watch somebody deadlift and I see the knees cave in, even for a conventional deadlifter, I'm like, they need wide stance box squats. Right. Just to teach them to cue and to practice, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. practice that movement over and over again, build up those hips. When they get in position for their deadlift, you know, now they'll be in a better position, their knees will be out a little bit rather than their knees caving in as they come up. Right. Looking like a baby giraffe. So I'm getting uh, wrist wraps on, which if you've never done low bar squat, you might be kind of wondering why for squats I'm using wrist wraps. But uh, with a low bar squat, because the bar's not here on top of you. So if the bar's here on top of you, you can get your elbows in and out. It's nice and comfy. But now the bar's back here, which means your hands cranked back here, which is cranking your whole elbow and shoulder back, putting a lot of torque on the, on the elbow, on the wrist especially, and on the shoulders. So I found if you put these wrist wraps on, it just really helps to stabilize the wrist, and it takes a lot of that tension off the joints. And I found it carries over even into like the elbow and the shoulder a little bit. Just the more stabilized this joint is, the tighter you can keep everything here and here, and there's not so much elbow uh, tension or even shoulder tension. Have you run into issues with your elbow, or what do you suggest for people that they're like, man, I'm trying to do what you're saying, but it's killing my elbow. Should they just go a little wider? Or? Yeah, I would try going a little bit wider. Um, if you're having an issue like it's just flaring up because of a number of things, maybe just switch to a different bar for a little bit, try some safety bar squats, just to give it a chance to recover. But if it's just like a small nagging discomfort, yeah, play with just a slightly wider grip. Um, you can even try the different, the different grip styles, you know, less fingers on the bar to kind of give you a little more mobility there. Um, you might want to use lifting straps in your training. 
you know, because you, you might be pulling on stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. You might have to maybe reduce the amount of uh, elbow extension work that you do. Like, there's a lot of things to factor in here. We're doing a lot of rowing. We're doing a lot of pull-ups. And benching, a lot too. Of benching with low bar squat. That combination can add up quick on your shoulders. Yeah, so, so it's just, just all aware. stuff to be very uh, conscious of. And most people that we know are benching and squatting at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. So that really adds up in addition to all the other pulling and pushing you're doing. It's a lot of work on the elbow. Yep. And one last tip we forgot to cover is head positioning. So, um, again, there's never a black and white, right or wrong answer with strength. It always it depends on what works for you. But what I find a lot with people, especially raw lifters with more moderate stances, is keeping the head kind of up. So you don't, when I get under the bar, I don't crank it up. I'm not looking up towards the ceiling. I'm looking just straight ahead, eyes very level. My cue for that is don't crank your head up. Instead, focus on just locking your head backwards into your neck, right? Your neck's here, you're just sucking your head back into your neck. You know, almost like creating like that double chin look a little bit. Create cocking the head back into the neck, and it gives you like a nice neutral head. And I've seen that. And if you are ever uh, watching footage of your squat and you notice your squat's kind of looking a little, little rickety, a squat maybe didn't feel super strong, but didn't feel bad either. If you watch your head, I've seen this a lot. A lot of lifters will start off here, they'll watch their feet, they're focusing on their technique, and they, they forget about their head. So they keep their head about here, kind of loose and neutral. And then they start squatting in mid rep, suddenly they put their head up. When they come out of their hole, their head is up. Your, their head went to its natural strong position. So that means a good thing to correct would be as soon as you walk it out and you take that big breath of air, cock that head up with it. Keep that head up nice and neutral. But again, it's different. You will see some people that keep a head that's almost like in line with their spine completely, almost looking down. So it just depends on what works for you. So I'm just gonna guess he's gonna do three to five reps here, probably not waste a lot of energy. Get a little movement, just seeing how it feels. Very normal, you know, for in terms of powerlifting, we don't want to we don't want to really waste a lot of energy uh, on the warm up. If you're going to do higher rep stuff, it might be you know with a plate or with a plate and a quarter, depending on your strength levels. You might do might do sets of ten, you know, for a set or two, and then you might do sets of eight, and then sets of five, and then sets of three. Um, but some of us even just like to do singles all the, the whole time. Just depends on the person a little bit. Ed Cohn used to talk a lot about like wedging yourself under the bar, and that's really what we're trying to do. And you know, also keep in mind all the stuff that we always teach you here at Super Training is we're trying to um, utilize the barbell to get ourselves tight, to get ourselves in position. So when I get under here, you know, it's really important that I'm focusing in on what I'm doing. Another, another thing is sometimes people have a preference to have the bar forward or have the bar back in the rack. It's all just, it's, it's all a preference thing because some people, when they push on the bar, they might start to push it forward, but you don't want it to be pushed crooked. You might push forward on one side and not forward on the other. So whatever way it is that, whatever style it is that you have, you need to learn, start to learn all these things. And that's why we practice so hard. But as you come underneath, just like Nick was saying, do that lat pull down move, start to pull, pull yourself into position and really learn the movement. Look, his feet are underneath the bar, they're not behind him. He's gonna take big air and boom, it's like the lockout of rep number one. So your unrack is rep number one. Big air, good. And see his head is a little more neutral than mine. So it's, it all depends on uh, what feels the best for you. Nick has a good combination of things going on. He's got a strong lower back. He's got a, he's got a good deadlift, pulling 650, right? Um, he's got a strong squat, squatting 600 pounds. So he's, he's well-rounded when it comes to the lower body stuff. And you can see he's got a big caboose back there. He's got, he's got some thick legs, right? And if you can kind of just plop down into like an Olympic, yeah, there you go. You plop down into kind of Olympic squat, you see how great the mobility is. He could squat wherever he wants to put the bar. It, most people can't. Most people have to find like a sweet spot to squat with the bar uh, in order to maximize the most amount of weight. But I would say that if, if, you, if I worked with Nick for a while and said, hey, let's see if we can switch to a higher bar squat, I think that he could get stronger that way. But I think he can also get stronger with the low bar. Now, what would be the most interesting part of the whole thing would be like, which way would he squat more in the long run? Right. And the answer probably is, he'd probably squat the most amount of weight squatting the way that he is now with the bar a little bit lower because he's using a combination of his mobility, his, uh, the strength of his legs and the strength of his back. Whereas if you just had the bar high, you're relying a little bit more on the strength of your core to keep you upright in the first place and the strength of your quads. 
Right, right. You get basically a low bar squat. You get to throw a little bit of like the deadlift muscles in there. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to say. Absolutely. You're working posterior chain even in a high you bar squat. You get to kind of do a little little hip. Yeah, hinge you there. get a little bit of that deadlift strength thrown in there, just enough to where it kind of boosts your squat. But it's also very build dependent. Ed Cohn so, was amazing at that. I mean, he would just keep. He would just keep pushing those hips back yeah, like crazy. Yeah. Well, actually, with a closer stance, he just keep pushing those hips yeah, back. Yeah, it's like he's built to like yeah. squat. It's Daniel crazy. Bell is super upright. Yep, and, and it's different on builds. I know some people that are just really strong in high bar. They're stronger high bar than they are low bar. They feel better high bar, and it's just their build. They have longer torso, stubbier legs. So for them, keeping that upright just it, it works really, really well. For them, a forward tilt might actually weaken their leverages. Okay. So. I forgot we got to chuck on the briefs. Oh, we, we should probably we should probably do that right now with Let's two do plates. That. If you want to be careful with these, you want to keep in mind they're neoprene. Yeah. So it's a good idea to kind of keep your shirt in there a little bit so you protect the material or keep your hand on there pretty good. You don't want to, you want to blow these suckers out. Right. Here, lock it in. But we did make them strong. Nice work. Good work. So they can handle smooth a little bit. One of the great things about the briefs and the way that we designed them is that they're catching the belt. And so when you're wearing these, it's kind of a good way to know if you're wearing the right size. You want to be able to have, like right now my belt, my briefs are like right here. And so you need to, might need to pull them up a little bit uh, as you're training. You notice both of us have our belts on, you know, but the belts aren't crazy tight. Like you can get your thumbs in there. And it's, the reason is, is that, you know, people think the belt is for your lower back, but your belt is for your lower back via your stomach and via your abdomen and your obliques. So you want to really try to push a lot of air into the belt. You can see here he's got a little little space there so he can breathe into the belt. Yeah, the belt is a tool, not a crutch. One of the worst things I hear is people saying, oh, I'm doing a beltless, ditch the belt, do it like a man. If you're thinking that way, then you're using the belt incorrectly. And like you said, people will try to get it as tight as they possibly can just to brace their lower back. But it's a tool, you're meant to breathe into it. It's meant to assist your breathing actually, just you're bracing into it, pushing against it, creating more abdominal pressure in the core. That abdominal pressure is what's gonna save your back. And now you should be creating this abdominal pressure even without a belt to save your back. So the belt is just a tool, but like Mark just said, you wanna have a little bit of wiggle room when you're relaxing in there, so you have room to punch that stomach out. Show me how fat you can make your stomach look. Because if you try doing it too tight right off the bat, and you're relaxed and you still can't get any fingers in there, when you go to breathe, you're not even gonna be able to, and I'm sure we've all done this before, oh, yeah. do it too I tight. Fold it up like an accordion. Yeah, you're, yeah. Oh, you feel like you're gonna pass out, and then yeah, you fold right over because you, you don't have any air to brace there. Yeah, you just, you uh, are trying to rely only on the belt and it doesn't matter how tight you get it at a certain point, you're gonna run into trouble, right? Loose, slightly looser belt tends to feel better for me with squats. It's kind of counterintuitive. Like if I'm kind of between two notches, both fit pretty well. One's slightly more tighter, one's, man, maybe it's a little too loose, it's still pretty tight. I'll go with the looser one. It usually feels a little bit better for me. Go attack the bar now, here we go. So watch as he settles in with the weight. And it's a move that he's gonna do right here as he gets his air, he's gonna arch into it real hard. Nice, smooth. Woo. You guys see what I mean? Like he, he you know, got here and he you know, stepped out and he was ready and then he did like a little thing right there. And that thing is getting a lot of air really trying to stabilize the core and push it into the belt. Show us exactly what you're doing. Yeah, here's here. the way to do it. So you wanna be careful, because if you try to focus on just arching, that can create hyperextension. And actually my arch might be a little more extreme than probably a lot of people have to get. It just works for my build, but you don't wanna arch arch, because you have a curve back. You know, you want your back as neutral as possible. So what I focus on doing is not arching. I go, here's my cues for it. I take a big air in, Punch into the belt, show me how fat you can make your stomach look, push all the air down like you're trying to push your stomach through your crotch while exploding the belt outward, and you're pushing your rib cage down into the belt as well. So, rib cage just go down, stomach goes down and out. But then from here, simply take your chest and lift your chest up to in front of you. So, everything is down, and then chest and upper back just go up. So, you have a nice, high, strong chest strong head that's neutral. So you're not focusing on arching so much as just getting that brace, pushing everything downward so it's tight, down and out, and then just pulling that chest up on top of it. So it ends up being. 
Him, him arching up like that is really just keeping him neutral. That's the key right. factor is that you don't want to make a C with your back one way. That would be flexion. You'd be like this. Overextension would be kind of a C the, in the other direction where it's even hard for me to even mimic because my body just doesn't move that way anymore. But a lot of people will kind of over arch. And when you, when you over arch, you're going to drive the knees forward too much. And that's going to feel awkward and, and just not be... Uh, advantageous either but for a lot of people you'll need to arch into the weight just to keep you at a neutral spine when you're arching start it from pushing down and out that pressure first can't stress that enough then your arch will become nice and neutral because if you try to just arch first and that's it no good you don't want to be twerking we take her just sitting right here just <laughs> just sit there like you're doing like a box squat I'll take okay. the camera from you <laughs> Whoop. and then just arch your chest up just arch your chest up and then kind of lean forward like you have a squat on your, on your back. And then arch up even more. See, that gets to be in a position of overextension. That's what we're talking about. Neither one of us can mimic it because we're too jacked. <laughs> but she got it down for us. I got it. Yeah, and you don't want to be doing that because a lot of times we'll see the knees cave in and we'll see people like they, they're trying to be like this. And then usually what happens as they come out of the bottom of the squat, they'll actually go like this and they go back the other way. So. Yeah, it's very common if you're a hyper, just hyperextended to actually have the hips come up first, right. then this, and then you're at a weak position. So for more squat tips, follow her at Ariana underscore, underscore, underscore R. Get your squat up, man. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing this for, um, you know, it doesn't give you the right to, to do it wrong. You, you still have to do it right every single time and try to, try to really learn and you're always just trying to get better. You wanna keep that, white belt mentality where you're just always trying to figure out a way to learn and absorb and to get better and it's great for me to train with someone like Nick um, who's still pushing big weights it gets me excited and gets me going and makes me think hey look I got to start pushing those big weights again myself so gonna line up underneath here just the same way as I've always done get everything tight push into the belt Nice drive, good. Ooh. Still moving smooth. Briefs feel good, man, yeah, because I'm not peaked at all to be handling heavyweight, <laughs> yeah. like at all. But, um, so like, even when I unrack it, like that's the biggest difference, when, you know, when you're peaked or not peaked. Right. When, I, when I unracked 600 pounds when I was peaked for it, it felt like nothing. When I unracked that, it felt like 800 pounds, right. and I was like, oh my God. Yep. But yeah, you get in the hole, and feel nice and tight with these things. Yep. But it, it is true, it's like they don't, I'm not suddenly throwing around 800 pounds. Right. So it's like I can still keep my normal raw style. Right. They're just good. They're yeah. fun. If you had a little uh, a little injury or you just wanted to push your training a little bit more, I mean, let's say that you are like, hey, you know what? I want to hit a you know, 600 pound squat by the end of the year or whatever, whatever the number would be. If he wanted to push and he wanted to get acclimated to that volume or that amount of work, he can turn around and start doing that now, especially if he was wearing the briefs. Right, right. Because there's just gonna give him just a little bit of assistance, just take away a little bit of the pain. And then if you wanted to, you could you could take them off and, and get resume your normal training, but they can right. help you absorb some of the punishment Definitely. of training up front, you know? I might have been a little high there, because I was just kind of nervous as hell about this, but hey, hey. <laughs> you, did you feel that on the way down? You moved a little bit like you... Yeah, yeah, I, I, was, I hesitated a little bit. That's why at the bottom I kind of might have stayed a little high. Yeah. I was just kind of nervous, because... I think I can... Fucking smashed it. I think it was great, but it, the, the bar moved a little bit as you were going down. I was like, what was that? Yeah, yeah, I think it was me <laughs> hesitating. Yeah. So normally when, I, when I'm confident, like I'll oof, lock it in and then just Boom! This one I was so kind of like. Maybe had a little bit this, of a, yeah, this one I was kind of like. Like a reverberation. All right, let me hesitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. But it felt good. It moved. So that was huge. Yeah, un unpeaked, matched my pretty much my raw max. My raw max was 602. So yeah. 
600 heavy ass pounds, solid ass pounds. Solid ass pounds. We hit an unpeaked, unprepared 600 pounds. Basically, max, we matched my raw max of 602 that I did when I was peaked for it. So we did that unpeaked, which is cool, and I think that kind of uh, came a little bit from the briefs, which was nice. So, like, I hit 585 a week ago. Um, and it moved, like, rougher than it usually does, but it still moved clean. So, like, I figured raw I could probably grind out like a soul-sucking 600 if I wanted to. But where the briefs came in, it was nice to where they make you feel so tight and firm at the bottom. Like, they take away that feeling of, like, getting loose at all at the bottom. Like, a lot of people have a hard time, especially under heavy weight, going down, get a little loose, you know, they kind of fold over, let the hips shoot a little bit. The briefs didn't do that. It feels almost like someone's spotting you from the booty. It's really, really nice. So that's the thing I've noticed, like, um, the biggest difference just when you're not prepared to move heavy weight is it just everything feels heavier on your back. So I'd walk a weight out and it's just like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Um, but once I started moving, man, in the hole and out of the hole, it's like, I just felt supported and just, phew. Have you ever done a reverse band squat before? No, never. I feel like that'd be kind of cool. I'm just kind of wondering, like, in comparison, but since you haven't done one before. I haven't done it, no. Yeah. Um, and I, I've done other reverse band things, like deadlifts and right, right. stuff like that, so I know kind of how the feeling is. Yeah. Um, you could almost compare it to that, but it's kind of it's no, even it's, cooler than that. It's yeah. almost like the difference. So if a reverse band squat is to, like, spotters helping the bar, then these would almost be like to a slingshot on the bench. Right. Because these still stretch and contract, like, with your muscles. Yeah, right. And, uh... Yeah, I think like a reverse band squat's gonna give you a lot more help. Right, right, you right. Know, this right. is like super, it's hard to describe. That's why we're using so many different words to try yeah. to describe it because what I was telling Nick earlier was that like if you had, if you have 500 pounds on, you're not gonna really necessarily feel the briefs. Mm -hmm. But squat 135 without the briefs on, then squat 135 with the briefs on, and you'll feel a major difference because percentage wise, it might be giving you, you know, 10 to, it might be giving you 15 to 30 pounds depending on how tight they are. But 15 to 30, to 30 pounds of 135 is a substantial amount of weight. Mm -hmm. But when you get, you know, if you're only getting 15 to, to 30 pounds of yeah. assistance out of a 500 or 600 pound squat, yeah. You're not gonna, you know, it's not gonna feel like it's doing everything for you. Just giving you a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, man. So this is this is kind of cool. It like allowed me to hit, you know, my raw max again, basically. And uh, but did it kind of without, like it kind of stopped me from redlining my body. Like I think if I had gone for that raw right now, you would have seen like uh, my soul leave my body, like barely make it back up, uh, just with how weight was feeling. But these kind of made it so it stayed nice and kind of clean, you know, heavy and not fast but still clean. So it kind of took some of the taxation off my body, I feel like. Yeah. But man, these feel good, especially awesome. in the hole. These feel great. It's great. I like that. And then if you use the uh, gangster knee sleeves uh, quite a bit before as well? Oh, these are the only sleeves I use, period. I love these. And um, like if I do a USAPL meet, I'll, uh, um, these are obviously, you can't do these in IPF. So I'll use like the Strongs or the X sleeves, but I'll train in these all year round and then I'll just swap to like the IPF approved sleeves for like the last six months, right, uh, right. weeks, six weeks or so. Right. Yeah, and I think people are so concerned on, you know, if they do a move like that, they're so concerned that they're going to lift a lot less. Mm, but no. it's really, it's, it's just no, it's a minor like, support. I don't right? think I mean, knee sleeves add much at all. Nah, people will yeah, argue, so. some people will be like, five, ten pounds. I guess it could be it depend on, on your technique, your yeah. stance, your build. But I think, especially for low bar squatting, when you're not getting as much forward knee travel, I don't think sleeves add that much. They just make your knees feel great. They make them feel warmed up. They make you feel like you can do more, which helps you do yeah, more. Yeah, it's mental too. It just feels yeah. compressed. Strong, 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 strong. Tight. Drive the hips, go. There you go. Good. Tight. Drive, good. Big air, big air. Good. Easy, that's moving fast. There you go, Mark. Good. Up. Good. Yep. Sweet. There you go. Sweet, 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 sweet. Woo. Feeling good. Am I good? Line You're good. Up. Yep. There you go, drive them out. Nice. Good. Good. Looking smooth. There you go. Box might be Good, a man. little high for me. You're in there. All right, tight, big air. Confidence, let's go. Oh, good. Big air, big air. I actually used box squats. Uh, 
to really hammer home loading the posterior chain and really get my low bar technique down. You won't see too much box squatting with raw lifters typically. Not that it's bad, it's just there's usually some other variations that might be a little better for raw lifters. Um, but man, I really love them, not so much for building strength, but I love them for really, uh, I was only so quad dominant and couldn't get out of that forward knee travel front squat kind of form. I had a really hard time loading my posterior chain and a low bar. So using box squats actually helped correct that tremendously. And I was really able to hammer home that nice low bar squat and get the hips loaded up. Come on, Nick. This feels light after yeah, right? <laughs> that single. Yeah, it should after the 600 pounds. It's nice to be able to, you know, get get back in here with a, some of these squats. You know, I just, like I said, I, I had a little bit of a something going on in my abdomen that was bugging me a little bit. Knee's been a little bit weird, um, but I switched to doing some leg pressing and some uh, belt squats, some leg extensions, some lunges, and things like that. And as much as I want to go up and wait, I just am a little bit out of practice. So you always, in my opinion, you always have to earn the right. You know, you always have to earn the right to do more weight. And it doesn't matter what I've done previously because the weight doesn't care about that. Uh, this is always just an adaptation process. So when I try to go and, uh, you know, go at this again, maybe next week or the week after, uh, I'll have kind of earned the right to go a little heavier. But for now, got to stay in my lane. Here we go. Did something weird on that first one, but the rest of them felt pretty good. So we just banged on some squats and Nick uh, did a great job hailing uh, 600 solid ass pounds. 600 solid ass pounds. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was great. That was Nick's first time in the briefs. Yeah, I've man. been wearing them and testing them for a while. What'd you think? I loved them. Loved them. Yep, they are uh, great for raw lifters. That's what I love most about them. I didn't have to go and change up my technique or style. I didn't lift like, you know, 200 pounds heavier than I could actually lift. They just, they gave me enough to allow me to kind of hit my regular max unpeaked, which is nice. And they just feel, they feel so tight and controlled at the bottom of the, the rep. So I love them, man. These would be great. Awesome, yeah. So you guys got a, a good look at the slingshot briefs. We also went over how to squat today. Showed you a lot of different elements of the squat. Went over head positioning, bracing, uh, low bar, high bar. We went over a lot of different stuff. We even uh, ended up throwing in uh, some box squats there. So yeah, these are the new briefs from markbellslingshot.com. Make sure you go check them out. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you all later. Push.